Oh boy, do I have a special episode for you guys today. It's going to be a slightly longer one than usual because I haven't been able to get videos out recently as much as I would have liked. I left you on a real cliffhanger with uh, the Matt Rife controversy on Sunday, didn't I? Though I'm not sure everyone really got that video, but uh, I'm going to finish it off today. You're going to see. You're going to see. Oh, you'll see why Matt Rife should be your enemy. And uh, it's not the reason all these other basic bitch channels are saying, okay? I've got my own reasons for despising Matt Rife. I'm not jumping on a bandwagon. And even if I am, by the way, what are you? Uh, a flea on an ox cart, all right? I'm up there on the fucking bandwagon uh, throwing t-shirts into the crowd like, uh, like uh, a cool Burt Kreischer. Um, anyway, what I'm going to show you today is the reason uh, Matt Rife is all of the things I said he was in my last video. And uh, then, of course, we will look at a little bit of uh, another bandwagon I like to hop on from time to time. Uh, Harry and Meghan and uh, what we can expect from them and their foundation this Christmas season. It's, uh, it's going to be quite fun. Okay. Okay, so the first thing we're going to look at is this uh, whole Matt Rife thing, which I laid the foundations for in my last video. I explained how he gives me very American Psycho vibes, okay? He's manufactured this cancellation uh, around himself for just a stupid joke he told in his Netflix special uh, where he uh, made some joke about a, a waitress having a black eye in Baltimore. And a load of women got offended, and then he put a link on his Instagram to uh, special needs helmets for anyone <laughs> who felt offended by his joke. Now, that's all very well and good. I don't know how people can't see that he's deliberately cancelling himself, okay? It reminds me of these uh, artists in the 1980s and 90s who uh, would bring dead animals to class and get kicked out of art school and everyone's like, oh, he's too, he's too crazy. They cancelled him. No, Damien Hurst, you cut up a cow and pickled it. All right? Though I did like your diamond encrusted skulls, I have to say, Damien. So, you know, swings and roundabouts. Anyway, the point is Matt Rife isn't even Damien Hurst. He, he's not cutting up animals. You know, that's got balls. I wouldn't be pickling sharks. Um, Matt Rife. Matt Rife is, uh, is rife with arrogance. And that's what I didn't like about him initially. The fake persona, the fake laugh, the Hollywood smile, the veneers, all that kind of thing. I, you know, if you can back that up, great. If you've got an amazing personality, you just happen to look like a Ken doll. That's fine. All right? Like me. <laughs> I, uh, I'm joking. Uh, like Gavin Newsom. No, no. Gavin Newsom's another one, though. American Psycho vibes, right? Uh, very, uh, very... Uh, you can't trust the guy. Okay? You can trust the Daniel Boland show, though. Anyway, we're going to get into it now. I promise you. This should, if it doesn't, I don't know what will... Blow your mind. This guy is a very bad guy, uh, Matt Rife. And we're going to see why here on this podcast with Brooke and Tanner. It's the cancelled podcast. What's it called? Cancelled with Tanner Mongo, Mongal, or whatever her name is. This is a girl who had an entanglement with Matt Rife, this uh, Brooke girl here. Uh, who's dressed like Charlie's Angels. She had an entanglement with Matt Rife. And this should, if you've got a decent bone in your body, make you despise Matt Rife almost as much as I do. Let's get into it, please. Let's go. Are you ready for this? Okay, well, we were just talking about Trisha. And I, I've been watching all her recent episodes. Trisha has been going in on Matt Rife, I think, harder than maybe anybody. Oh, you're ready. And it's hilarious. Not hilarious. But... Oh, you're ready. I was thinking about it because I'm like, I know she's probably going to watch last week's episode and be like, you... Oh, you're ready. Okay, relax. Sorry, I, I can't, I can't. It's not that crazy. 
I just like I'm thinking to myself I'm like god I wonder if she sees that and she's like disappointed in me because I'm like mm. she's probably like what why as I have you? been forever oh, okay no I'm not disappointed in you I I just hate holding shit in obviously you know like I'm always like leave this in put it in like whatever and and if you go back and watch the Matt Rife episode you can just feel my disdain there's a difference definitely a difference between your energy toward him and my energy toward him because I like Real, I thought the world of him. I'm getting a little bit of backlash. Okay, we both kind of are, honestly, be, for being like a little bit of like Matt Rife apologists on yes. the last episode. And, and I, I never want to be that. I can't stress this enough. But at the end of the day, you're my best friend, and if you want to protect something, yeah, I'm not gonna. I'm uh, like me saying. How I, 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 I've got to uh, stop it here for a second because I think there might be people who think this is just going to be some girl who's upset about having had a fling with Matt Rife and he wandered off into the sunset and now won't return her calls. It's nothing like that. Okay, it really is nothing like that. Also, it flies in the face of everything Matt Rife is trying to tell us that he is. Uh, he got asked uh, a, a couple of a while back on uh i think it was on was it on tom segura uh it was on some, one of those shows he got asked uh whether he's sleeping around with girls after shows and he's like oh no man i'm i'm really i'm a, a guy who's committed to long-term relationships he's on the jordan peterson podcast i mean if jordan peterson finds out that he's uh, in the belly of the wheel uh he would be very disappointed he, he, he he's always warning about uh, Pino Pinocchio, right? He loves Pinocchio. He don't like liars. Matt, Matt, have you been lying? I think you've been lying, Matt. How I truly feel about him in this situation would go against what you wanted. Yeah, and I appreciate that. So honestly, thanks for thanks for backing me up on that. But I like because I, I have in. never been an apologist of him. I just am gonna ride for my girl. Yeah, but Ooh, have you seen how much she hates him? By the way, the other girl, right? This is the girl. This is Brooke, who uh, has had her thing with Matt Rife. The other girl is her friend Tana. She and I feel like a little um, a gossipy, bitchy little uh, phagocyte right now but uh he uh, you know it, it, it this is sick it's going somewhere believe me this is going somewhere i i want to keep you on board here because i feel like a lot of people are just gonna go oh well that's nothing it's just a bit of girly gossip no it isn't no it isn't i have truthfully i have because and even like that episode i came in here and i was like i was ready to i knew i was gonna get hate for it because obviously like everybody's on one team okay? yeah and it's like and by the way, what they're talking about is they had Matt Rife on the podcast a few months back, right? And, uh, of course, the, all this had happened previously, what they're going to talk about right now. We hate Matt Rife. And I, I truly was like, I have to say something. Because I would hope that, like, anybody who knew me, like, I would hope if something like that crazy were happening to me publicly, I would hope they would speak out and be like, wait, no, that is not how she is. Obviously, before I knew Matt, I, like, knew his, per like, his persona it's like a fuck boy that's his whole thing that's his stage thing like and so that's what i expected of him so like obviously like fuck boy. when i got to know him and stuff i was like okay wait that's not him at all yeah and like and there are some people in the world who are playing uh what they call now 4d chess right uh i call it 3d chess because they're just moving pieces in real life okay i don't know why the fourth dimension comes into it but uh they're just playing chess <laughs> Uh, they're playing standard chess with castles and knights and uh, and, and all those things. Bishops. Uh, he is... What he is doing is presenting as this sort of good-looking, happy chappy. Oh, man, I'm talking about fucking and all that kind of thing. But I'm not really like that. Except he is really like that. He is pulling the wool over all of your eyes. And, and again, people are going to start thinking. They're going to be in the comments. I can hear you tapping away, you fucking psychos. I don't care if somebody is a fuckboy. I don't care if they're shagging all their fans and he gets loads of female attention. That's do what you want to do. Just please don't expect me to believe you and to think you're a, a good person and to think that you're a stand-up guy who would get on really well with Jordan Peterson. I would get on really well with Jordan Peterson. 
Am I trying to uh, steal Matt Rife's uh, uh, aura? No, I'm not. Not at all. There are so many people in the comments in the last video as well. You're jealous. Uh, you're jumping on the bandwagon. No, no. Jumping on the bandwagon is what I'm doing at the end of this video, talking about Harry and Meghan. <laughs> I'll hop over to that bandwagon in a few minutes' time because, uh, yeah, frankly, it gets clicks. And I've got to say, I love talking about Harry and Meghan. You're going to love that bit, by the way. Even if you're not a Harry and Meghan, even if you're here for the Matt Rife stuff, you're going to love their Christmas card and their mission statement. You're going to, well, you're going to love it all. Anyway, back to this. Uh, the way he treated Brooke, you are going to lose your minds. Or you should, at least, in my in my view. So, At the time, he was just blowing up and hot and funny. Like, there wasn't as many bad things. Like, I completely see why you would do it. I would do it. Yeah, and know? so, well, for context, Mr. DC is Matt Rife. Mr. Yeah. DC, yeah. I had my ideas of him, and then when I got to know him, I, like, really decided, like, that is not who he is at all. He's, like, a way, like, way better person than I would have thought, you know? Mr. DC, by the way, is a man who she was dating. It turns out is Matt Rife. Uh, and she referred to him as Mr. DC all the time because he was, I think, because he was living in Washington, DC, I'm guessing. Uh, and uh, she called him Mr. DC and told all these stories about him. And now anyone who's been watching the podcast knows uh, that all those stories were about Matt Rife. Um, so just so that you know. You know what I mean? Matt, he, I wouldn't say he was like my ex or anything because it wasn't like this serious relationship, but like it was more like I wasn't just hooking up with him. You know what I mean? Yeah. It was like, it was very... You liked him. Yeah, I really liked him and his, like even more, like more so from his end, he was the one who was initiating the conversations that were like, yeah. you know, like, you know, I haven't felt this way about anybody in so long and like so just like, I mean, to anyone with like common sense, it's, it's love bombing, but I... Love bombing. Okay, ladies, uh, who who defended Matt Rife. Do you know about love bombing? Um, these disgusting men. Uh, there are women who do it, I'm sure, as well. But uh, normally it's women who uh, uh, want a man to be all lovey and stuff. They're, they're waiting for some man to come along uh, who, who really cares about them and says, uh, talks about their feelings and all that kind of thing. Um... <laughs> men, some clever men, some who are playing 3D chess, know that women love this and that they can get them into bed by telling them all the things they want to hear, right? I can give you the world. You're the best I've ever had. There are men... I'm, I'm, uh, is this news to anybody? That there are pieces of shit out there. You see them a mile off. How do people not see them a mile off? These psychopaths. That is what is happening here. It gets way worse. Please stick it out. This, you won't believe what he's been up to. I had at that point lost all my marbles, seriously, so. And we love a love bomb. So I was like, this guy's the fucking nicest guy ever. And like, I had just come off this like terrible relationship with like the world's most psychotic person you guys know that yeah and so i was like what the fuck like this guy's so hot he's so nice he's so attentive like it's always the same women who don't see it ha coming as well and it's kind of this uh i think she actually says later that it's like she's got a bit of bpd borderline personality and um uh, by the way don't get those bpd people mixed up with the narcissists and the, those crazies bpd people are kind of just a bit vulnerable and make stupid decisions and uh Overly emotional, but the, essentially their heart is in the right place most of the time. Uh, and uh, don't come at me with what it technically is in the comments. I don't care. All right, I've read enough about it. I've watched enough of Doctor Ramanani, Ramani, whatever her name is, and Jordan Peterson. I know what BPD is. Shut up. Um, she is too trusting. Uh, she's got this thing where she idolizes people who are nice to her, okay? Uh, I've seen a lot of this in my life. Uh, this is very typical. Girls who go, uh, that fall for the charming, good-looking guy who's a piece of shit. Everyone can see from a long way away. Tana can see that this guy, that Matt Rife, is a terrible person. She could see it a mile off, but poor old Brooke here, she couldn't see it, Okay? Uh, and Matt Rife, 
I'm telling you, it gets worse. Let's continue. I, I was obsessed with this guy, yeah. okay? And we were all on board for it until... Yeah. Well, even... At, like, the, here's the thing. We um, ended... Like, he was here in LA when, like, I started getting, like, a little frustrated because, like, I remember you had come with me to his show at the Laugh Factory and, like, mm -hmm. I had just, you know, flown across the country to go spend time with him and see all his shows and whatever. And then he comes to LA and, like, just literally was like not blowing me off but just didn't really like yeah and like keep in mind you guys are next door neighbors yeah he lived so it was like very like it's like you're home and i could throw a rock through your window you know yeah so imagine my frustration i'm like how embarrassing that i just went like and did all of this and then you come back and you can't even hardly spend time with me it oh and also by the way that is the worst thing you can do to someone with bpd ignore them and uh make them feel abandoned that's what they most terrify i don't know if she has bpd by the way i think she says something like that something i've got some memory of her saying something about bpd but uh you might feel that uh, at this point and I, i've got to insist i'm sorry to repeat myself i've got to insist it does get worse uh she you might feel that she is overly emotional and has become too attached to him and she might be a bit naggy and she might be a little bit clingy and whatever. Those things may be true. However, the other stuff she says is also true, which we're getting to, I promise. Happened a couple times. He'd come to LA a couple times where it was like, I would only, he would go to dinner like once or something. And I'm like, wait, what? Like, just strange. So we went to the show at the Laugh Factory that night. You saw him when he came, said hi, whatever. And he's like, okay, babe, like I'll see you after the show. I'm so happy you're doing this. I can express to you the I, serotonin. Listen, I'm, you know what, whatever. I'm so proud of you. He tells me like, okay, like I'll see you after the show. I'll be over as soon as I'm done, whatever. I stay up all night. The man never comes. Okay. So I'm like. He got a better offer. By the way, that's the thing. Uh, he's there doing all these shows in LA and he's got all these backup girls. Okay. He's famous. He's good looking. Uh, He's a ladies' man, his, or his entire audience of women, and he says, yeah, 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 I'll meet up with you, and then something better comes along, and he decides not to, and she's kind of clingy, and he knows he can have her as a backup. That's what's going on. That's all that was ever going on, okay? And you will see that we have receipts. I'm just frustrated with the situation. I feel dumb, kind of, because I'm like, you're saying all of this, you're telling me the whole time like we're separated it's like i can't wait to see you i can't wait to be with you like I, you're all i think about whatever and then you're fucking literally outside my window and you can't go down to the mailbox like mm -hmm. it was just like frustrating so i mm -hmm. i told him that and i was proud of myself because i like stood up for myself and i was like listen like that's not gonna work for me mm -hmm. okay like sorry and that was when like the conversation happened where he was just like i'm s like i'm so sorry but i don't i do not have time like I don't for have a time. relationship. Like, no, I don't have time for the relationship. Like, I just don't. And he's like, I, he told me, he says, I haven't felt this way about anybody in so long. Like, I've, and I've been dreading telling you because he's like, I just wanted to keep. That is sick, by the way. You're blaming circumstance saying, oh, I really, I really want this to work. Uh, but, uh, <laughs> God, the world, damn you, God. Right? That's the kind of thing. That's the kind of guy Matt Reif is. And, you're gonna say it's his word against hers. It's not, it's not, it's not. Like doing it as long as I could, but like I just, I can't put energy into this, like whatever. Mm -hmm. And I was like, sl like so respectful, honestly, like appreciate you telling me, mm -hmm. wish you the best. And I was like, hopefully down the line, like you can work it out and you can figure it out. And you know, all of a sudden you will have time for a girlfriend. I, I, I will admit I was, um. Assuming it would be like, honestly, me. You can't say all that and get a girlfriend and gain my respect. Yeah, well, okay. Doesn't matter. But the point is the conversation was so respectful. And I, I really do like gauge like how much, how I feel about a man based on like how he handle, handles like something like that. And he was so sweet to me and nice to me. And he like, he hit all the points and he like made me feel like good about it. So I was like. She's, uh, by the way, I can just tell. I'm sorry. I can tell she is being honest. And I don't care what you say. Uh, about, about uh, his word versus hers. She's clearly being honest. I, I don't I don't care. I don't need any evidence, which she does have, by the way, which we're getting to. Uh, she is clearly someone who tells the truth. She's clearly very emotional. Now, she might be too emotional. Might, maybe she shouldn't be so stupid as to fall for this uh, guy. But this guy is a sneak. He is 
Um, uh, Ted Bundy. <laughs> no, because uh, he hasn't done those things yet. I just respect him a lot. Yeah, go okay? on. Kill it. And I've had that same, like, feeling about him all of this time. Because I'm just like, you know what? I, like, mm. I'm a silent supporter. I've watched him from afar. I, like, love to see, like, him be successful. And, like, I was with him when his last special came out. So to see him get a Netflix special was, like, huge. Yeah. Okay? So imagine my, like how i felt when i'm seeing like oh my god like this guy got like the one thing in the world that he wanted and everybody fucking hates it like yeah hates it okay yeah and i'm like oh my god i just felt so bad for him because i'm like yeah it's but my, that's still, where your like, empathy comes in way too hard so the, what they're talking about here by the way just to make it very clear to everyone is that they got a load of shit for when they had Matt Rife on the show and they were defending him because, uh, you know, there were a load of women who were saying, oh, how can you defend him? He made a joke about domestic abuse. And they're saying, uh, or, or rather, uh, uh, Brooke here is saying how she defended him because she really liked him. She's explaining the situation she was in. She really was rooting for him like a good person would, uh, even though she'd been through what she'd been through with him. When he got his Netflix special and everyone hated it and he got caught up in this completely manufactured cancellation and then tried to make people feel sorry for him everywhere. Uh, she had him on the show and they got accused of they got accused of being apologists for Matt Reif. Uh, and it's insane. Like he's getting all these other people into trouble and into arguments and stuff. And he's just there thinking he's going to get away with it all. You're not, Matt. Not on my watch because it's like the stiff socks of it all and like no the... yeah so i'm gonna i'm gonna get there but, but i get it you still wanted to protect yeah so in shit. my in my head i'm just like this sucks because like i really did like i got to see like how much he really does care about the job and stuff and like whether he's funny or not is up in the air but like he tries really hard and he works really hard and i actually did just feel so bad to see like he tries really hard and he works really hard that is the <laughs> You could, everything I've said about Matt Reif uh, is nothing compared to a girl saying, yeah, he works really hard and he tries really hard. Whether he's funny or not, uh, that's up in the air. That will make his balls go into his intestines and stay there. His one thing that he got, like, just completely go that, like, as badly as it could go. You know what I mean? Yeah. So that's why, so I didn't feel bad coming in here and defending him. And honestly, like, you guys don't even know how bad it was because I cut some of it. I was like, this is, I'm going to get cooked. But I was on here like, I'm like, I love Matt. He, he respects women. Like, which is crazy. I, I was like, I could, because I really like, I'm like, I feel that I have always felt that way about him. I really felt like he respected me. Like I did. She was defending him saying he respects women. He's not a misogynist. <laughs> and women in general. Tell me why. But silent Girl, disrespect is just as loud as vocal disrespect. I know, but that's not the point. <laughs> I am on TikTok the other day, and I get tagged in a video of this girl and it's her and Matt. It's all these photos of her and Matt, like a little slideshow, if you will. Okay. I'm like, hmm, that's interesting. I go to the comments and she had commented back to somebody and she was like, relax you guys this was at the beginning of this year i go hmm huh <laughs> i'm like what when <laughs> like when was it exactly because i was seeing him at the be beginning of this year and like i'm like when was it so i dm her slay i dm her and i'm i'm like hey like just wondering honestly like what was the timeline exactly just because like i'm i'm curious because i so she finds out that uh that uh matt reif possibly was fooling around with another girl at the same time that he was with brooke okay and she was a little bit worried about that like she wanted some closure maybe was he seeing this other girl while he was with me that's gonna be heartbreaking isn't it oh no i mean his current girlfriend was not long after me either so i'm like it had to have been Red flag, by the way, no pun intended for his other terrible special, uh, which is called Red Flag. He, uh, 
<laughs> if you leave someone or you break up with someone and then they immediately have another partner. <sighs> Around the same time. Immediately, she puts me into a group chat. You never want to be in a group chat with beautiful, strange women, okay? When I tell you, Tana, you want to talk about women in STEM, we were fucking, there were timelines, there were Venn diagrams, there was, it, we were comparing notes. It was so I crazy. see why you waited to tell me this. Yeah, absolutely. So she found out that Matt was possibly fooling around with some other girl at the same time. Uh, she was with him at the same time Brooke was with him. When she DMs this other girl, she gets put in a group chat full of beautiful women who are all saying the exact same thing with dates, with Venn diagrams. I don't know if she's been uh, hyperbolic there, but uh, you know, you'd want to see where you coincided. Um, that's fucking crazy. Not that he's sleeping around with loads of women. I've got to be honest. Uh, not honest. Uh, I've got to insist. <laughs> and I've got to be honest. Uh, I don't want to end up in the belly of the whale again. Uh, yeah. Sleeping around, doing whatever you want to do when you're a young, attractive man. An attractive young man as well. Uh, that is what it is. Okay, it's not ideal. Uh, however, it's the lying. It's the love bombing. It's the manipulation. It's the telling people on podcasts, no, I don't do that kind of thing. I'm a committed uh, uh, monogamist, right? Bullshit you are, Matt. I'm telling you, Tana, for a man who doesn't have time, this man had the most <laughs> oh, you're time. You know, I get, I get, I, when I'm really mad, I just start laughing. I just start laughing. <laughs> you're fucking kidding, Brooke Schofield. Tana, I'm like, and I'm, I'm like, oh my fucking God. Like, oh my God. Cause I'm not kidding. All of this time I would see his billboard on sunset. I'd be like, <laughs> like I was literally like his biggest supporter. And I've, I've been waving a fucking Matt Reif apologist flag for like all this time. Like thinking like, oh, he was so good to me. Like. What the fuck? And he never was. He got a girlfriend right after. He lied a lot. Anyway, like, let me. Sorry, keep... sorry, sorry. I'm mad now, and I'm. If that gets cut, I swear to God, I'll kill myself. So. That's the worst thing as well. When you're a friend and you're watching this uh, happen uh, to somebody else, they're getting the hell manipulated out of them. You can see it, but you don't know how much you can say, um, because it's like, well, I don't want to alienate. My friend and the friend then spends more time with their crazy partner and we lose them for good, right? Um, so she's obviously on cloud nine, as well as being uh, very surprised and shocked at how disgusting Matt Reif has been. She's like, yes, I knew it. Just like I was when I saw this video. I am talking to these girls, whatever. I, um, and I'm thinking you about it. My immediate reaction, just because I'm me and I'm fucking stupid, I start gaslighting myself. I'm literally like, okay, well, you know what? Like, maybe it wasn't as serious as I thought it was. Like, maybe I just, maybe I thought it was like this huge serious thing and he didn't. <laughs> yes, that's exactly the kind of girl he goes after. Ones who will completely think it's their fault. What did I do? Did I completely misread the situation? No, he manipulated you. That's what happened. <laughs> okay. Took. He preyed on your weakness. He spotted you from across the room. That girl there. She looks like I could fuck with her head a bit. That's what he did. Took only a couple scrolls, Tana, for me to get back to where he's telling me, like, fucking, like, just, I don't want you seeing, I, just, I don't want you, even, you to even look at another guy. I don't want anybody else touching you. I don't want you, he didn't want me hanging out with, like, my guy friends. Like, it was so specific in that, like, he was like, you're the only girl. Controlling as well. It's not that he's manipulative and just wants to get away with, uh, you know, uh, sleeping around with loads of different women. No, no, he wants them to be exclusive to him. This is uh, Chris D'Elia level stuff. Okay. Okay. Do you believe me now?
idiots, the people who doubted me. I, I know I'm going to get some comments under this video saying, well, you know, <laughs> so what? You jealous much that he's... Uh, no, no, I, I get people being jealous of a guy who's good looking, rich and sleeping around with loads of women. That's absolutely, that's whatever. I would never be jealous of that. I'd be, I'd be rooting for the guy. Do what you want. It's the lying, the scheming. Okay. You don't have to believe me, but uh, it is what it is. Well, I want, I keep, we're talking about when we're going to move to DC and run away. Like, I was not, I don't think I was delusional. Like, that happens all the time as well. Oh, we're going to do this, the plans for the future. They, we, you're going to be the mother of my kids. Uh, I sound like a, a, a little girl. <laughs> and uh, making my uh, videos here about Matt Rife being nasty to women. And then we'll do a bit of Meghan Markle at the end. <laughs> but I'm onto something. I really don't. You weren't. I was not. But the, this is the cherry on top. This is the straw that broke the camel. Yeah, back. so I'm like, I really wasn't like. Because you've been so great. You've had so much grace that you didn't ever need to have as is. Just for by the way, the, the cherry on the cake here is how she gives him his comeuppance. Brooke gets a little bit of her own back on Matt. Um, we're going we're gonna to get to that, okay? We're going to get to that. Have patience for the love of Christ. Fucking last week, I'm like apologizing for him knowing that I'm going to get hate for it. And like, I'm just like, how crazy is that? Like, the, meanwhile, he's fucking like, first of all, if you're telling me that I cannot hang out with guy friends, you don't want me talking, hooking up with anybody else, then nobody in fucking Central America should be receiving a dick pic from you. I just, and that's Whoa! just my, okay? A face tuned one at that. And a face tuned one at that. Uh, unbelievable. But uh, he's been sending dick pics to girls and it happens, it just so happens that they spoke about a guy who sent uh, Brooke a dick pic a few months ago and that it was facetuned. It had been manipulated, the image had been altered and they could tell because it was the, on the name of the file of the photo when it was sent, it had been, uh, it had come from that app. Uh, so they were talking about Matt Rife, he's sending D pics to all these girls and he's enlarging them. Um, or getting rid of the wrinkles, whatever. I, I, I'm like, I didn't say it. I start looking at the whole situation different because I'm like, okay, so he's not this really nice guy that I thought. And like, I have bad judgment, but like sometimes I like really miss, like, I don't understand how bad it actually is. And I'm thinking like, there were things, like there were things that happened during that time that I just like wrote off as like not a big deal that I'm like, wait, what the fuck Stiff was wrong socks. with me? Talk Dude, about it before I, I fucking talk about shit myself on canceled. Matt Reif went on the Stiff Socks podcast with our baby Trevor Wallace. And okay. I just want to say this is when I knew. This is when I knew. But I, I want my girl to have the floor. I was still actively seeing him at the time. In fact, we'd gone to dinner the night before. He was telling me all about how he was going on a podcast. I said, oh, I have a podcast. He's like, oh my God, really? Like, he left your kidding. he left your house to go to camp, just to he, go to Stiff Socks. No, right? I, I, I was with him the night before. It doesn't matter, but... The point is, I'm like, 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 I'm excited to watch it. I'm like, oh, got to watch my man on a podcast. I don't know if you guys recall. Um, that was like the most, oh. he's since had it wiped, <laughs> wiped from the internet. I wish I could wipe it from my memory. I'm livid. Like, I actually like, try, like I have to drink this because I'm livid. He went on the Stiff Socks podcast. First of all, first offense was Trevor asking what his type was. His answer was, blondes with fake tits okay <laughs> yeah uh, also anyone uh, who says that yeah gay okay uh i oh, oh you're joking um i i i didn't, i've never got here's a thing here's a take i don't and i'm sure you've heard other men say it but i really mean it the fake uh the breast implants they always look terrible no one has ever improved their, their physique by putting silicone in their chest. It, it's disgusting. Any man who finds that attractive is a closet homo. Right? That's what's going on. 
but we don't know. I don't think Matt is that. I, if I'm being honest, I think he's just lying because he lies about everything. He just said, "Ah, oh, blondes uh, with fake tits, whatever." That was his response because that was what came to mind when he was asked. And of course, he was lying because he was with Brooke, the complete opposite. For the audio listeners, I am a brunette <laughs> with fucking real tits. They're huge, but they're real. <laughs> I'm like huge, by the way, but they're real. Um, so that was like a little bit like a, offensive. But Again, I, when I knew. But I justified it a little because I'm like, you know what? If someone asked me my type, I'd just say ugly guys. So like that's not the worst thing in the world to say. But he goes on to say that he... Um, is disgusted by Audi vaginas, like girls who have Audi vaginas. Oh, because it looks like I don't want to hear this. Tag on them. Now I'm going to give you guys the canceled exclusive here, but I, Brooke Schofield, have an Audi vagina. Oh, okay? we don't want to hear I that. I have a fucking, and so does fucking two thirds of America. You fucking weirdos. Imagine me sitting there, my fucking jaw on the floor, my fucking pussy doing the fucking line dance on the couch. Just like what the fuck did Gonna you have do? like to silence a lot of that? I hope you just what? I hope every single listener knows that when that podcast aired, I tried to swing. You was, guys thought that was disgusting. The, the the public was like, "Oh my god, how horrible!" Imagine how I felt. He literally just went on a podcast and was like, "Yeah, I'm fucking repulsed by this bitch." Like when you had sex with him, did you ever come? Okay, don't talk about that. Oh, I know you didn't. We have Enough to that out. What I'm thinking though now, I'm like, God, that she that, just, that description had to match somebody. And I'm like, thinking back too, I'm like, okay, how crazy that he could spend no time with me in LA, but it's like, oh, he only go gets so many LA days a year. I'm like, he must have had to hit all his stops. I'm holding my girl. He went to someone's after that show for sure. What the fuck was I it, thinking? This all makes me so remap. Like I was livid when it all first happened and you know, but I, I understood like, that you wanted to protect dude, him, but it's like, it'll never not make me furious. Like, and I'm just so happy that we are finally doing this because yeah. I I wanted to do it on the episode with him. Well, I was I was a little oh, let's talk about that for a second. All of you guys who bullied me for my behavior on the Matt Rife episode, I had not seen him since he told me he would be at my house in an hour, babe. Okay, that was my first ever time ever coming face to face with him after like he literally was just like, okay, good night, babe, see you in a sec. Like, of course I was like I Osama didn't even know. Laden. I didn't know he was going to come in and act like he didn't fucking know me from Adam. I thought it was going to be like, oh, like, yeah, we know each other. Like, it was just such a I was so living energy. after that episode. I remember he left and I was shaking. I was like nervous. I just felt weird because I was like, why are you pretending you don't know? It was just the weirdest like feeling. And I was like, wait, what? Like, and I don't know. Like, I was hesitant too. even on the way here. I was like, do I want to talk about this? Because like, yes, well, he has a girlfriend now and I don't want to like that. Like, she needs to know. <laughs> She really needs to know. Well done. She's probably going through enough as far as public embarrassment is concerned. Okay? Like, I don't know. I just, I don't want to be that bitch who's like coming on and like exposing somebody on a podcast. But what the fuck? Like, you're a fucking loser and you embarrass me. Honest to God, that's what it is. I hate fucking being embarrassed by guys. I hate that like mm -hmm. my reputation you, I, is woo! coming online to fucking like apologize for all these fucking losers who treat me so badly. Like, yeah. You give I hate people that. so much grace, and I love you so much. You give me so Slay. much grace. You're my best friend. But it's like, I've wanted you to do this for fucking six months. Like, fuck him. And like, well, yeah, I'm, so, I'm like, so sorry I'm late to the party. And I don't, also don't want it to seem like I'm like, okay, well, you know, like, and now that I know he doesn't like me, now I'm on the train. But it's like, I, in my head. You I, did everything you could to no. try to protect someone that you got to know. And I can understand that and respect that completely. Because internet hate is horrible. Yeah, I just thought, like, like he, I was like, he is genuine. That is another thing about it as well. This fake canceling makes it sound like it means anyone who comes out and tries to, uh, to, 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 to hate on Matt now is part of the woke cancel mob. I'm not trying to cancel him. I'm saying I find him repulsive. That is it. Genuinely the nicest guy. I was like, I've never had a bad experience with him. To this day, I've never had, like, he's never what? been me. Like, I just, I think that you have a discrepancy with disrespect behind your back versus disrespect to your face. Like, if someone I have a hard time villainizing people in general. I think it's like a BPD thing. I really, I literally cannot, like, yeah. 
I I knew it. She said something about BPD. There you go. Told you. Can't like see the bad in people yeah. literally like as easily as I want to. Like, yeah. But, and I love that about you. It's like, sometimes your biggest weakness is also your biggest like power and strength. Like you are the most loving, forgiving person, and I will. I always try to like be with you on that train. Like when you wanted to give Clinton grace, I was like, okay, I'll pretend that I don't thing. hope he dies, and I'll podcast with you about it, and I'll. I'll whatever public because the public is a scary thing the well, public yeah. narrative is a scary thing so i have your back tenfold but like i hate to see you give grace to matt Rice. well yeah so that's the you thing know? like that the clinton thing like didn't help either because it's like i have this like history now fucking i have we have millions of girls who watch the podcast and i'm like literally just this little pathetic fucking bitch who's like defending these horrible Anyway, uh, just because this is getting too long uh, now, I'm going to tell you what happened briefly. Uh, she messaged Matt Reif, and I can't remember exactly where it is. I know it's coming up. And uh, he blocked her. And she kind of made excuses for him again. She said, well, maybe it's just that I'm... Uh, I don't know, maybe he blocked me because, well, he's got a girlfriend now and he wants to... Uh, you know, an official girlfriend, he wants to block all the girls he ever spoke to, right? After this podcast came out, Matt Reif decided to DM Brooke. And uh, what did he say? After he blocked her, he said, Hey Brooke, this is MR from Matt Reif. Okay, look at what Brooke sent back. To him, special needs helmets, head protection and support, the link he used. Go and get your fucking special needs hat on, you absolute dick. Well done, uh, Brooke. Brooke, uh, Brooke, what's her surname? I can't remember. We're moving on now. We're moving on to a little bit of uh, Harry and Meghan gossip. And uh, what everyone's been talking about, uh, here you can see it on Bazaar, the Bazaar website. Harry and Meghan have brought out their release. They've released their festive 2023 Christmas card. Now, I don't think we can call this a Christmas card. Let's take a look at it. It says, on behalf of the office of Prince Harry and Meghan, uh, the Duke and Duchess of Sussex, still getting as much gasoline out of that as they can, Archwell Productions and Archwell Foundation. This sounds like uh, very much like your secretary wrote it. Not very nice. But on behalf of them, there's this. A uh, link to a video of all they've done this year. There they are. Looking at something at Invictus Games. Yes, we saved all these people from PTSD. Um, on behalf of the office of Prince Harry and Meghan Markle. We wish you a very happy holiday season. Thanks for all of the support in 2023. Now, uh, okay, we've got that. Now, let's have a look at what the link, there is a link with this card to what they call the Impact Report. The Archwell Foundation Impact Report. Now, we've already seen this video on this, vid on this, uh, <laughs> on this channel. Uh, you've got them here. Uh, in 2022, in Uvalde, that's where all the kids got killed, and uh, they were there. And, of course, they, they saved the day, you'll remember. They went in there and caught the gunman. Uh, now, that was disgusting. But I want to read their... What's well, not a mission statement, is it? It's an impact report. It's a report on how Archwell has impacted the world. And don't be cynical, because it certainly has impacted my world. It's got little segments. Here's the first one. We are committed to a simple but profound mission. Show up, do good. Right? Show up, do good. That's pretty simple. Is it easier said than done, though? Let's find out. Um, we believe in the community. We believe. We believe in the power of community. Building as a potent and transformative solution for mental wellness. The cornerstone of our collective well-being. Okay. They believe in the power of community building. In the power of community building. Okay, so I... First of all, what's community? What is community building? It's when you put communities together, like Lego. No? 
They believe in its power. Those, there is the power in the process of putting communities together, right? Uh, but how is there a power? It is a power as, uh, as a potent and transformative solution for mental wellness. So uh, mental wellness is a problem which has to be solved. Yes, uh, there's too many people who are mentally well. And uh, there, we need a strong, a potent, and transformative solution. So the solution cannot just solve the problem. It has to transform the problem, evolve it in some way. And uh, that's the power for that transformative and potent solution comes from uh, building communities. Okay? I mean, so far, so, you know, simple. It does what it says on the tin. Um, the cornerstone of our collective well-being as well. So it's not only a, a transformative solution for mental wellness, but it's also the cornerstone of our collective well-being, okay? Bloody commies. This belief shapes everything we do as we reach communities locally and globally to inspire positive change through lasting solutions, right? So this belief shapes everything they do. The belief that building communities solves mental wellness and provides cornerstones in the bridge of uh, uh, collective well-being. Um, they are... Th th that belief, they be they're believing that shapes everything they do as they reach local and global communities to which they are finding long-lasting solutions to all of their problems with mental wellness, or the, 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 you know, the mental wellness pandemic that we're living through. Through these stories of impact, we can find inspiration. <laughs> uh, and in these moments, we find joy. <laughs> I fucking love Harry and Meghan. I'm not joking. I absolutely... L let's find out what else they do. Uplifting communities, okay? Particularly Ngozi communities, right? Oh, it's not Ngozi. Is that Ngozi? It's not Ngozi. Women with green hair are also welcome. Hmm. We uplift communities across the globe by investing time and resources uh, into people and places that foster meaningful bonds and help people thrive. Now, the word thrive to me, do you know what I always imagine when I imagine thriving? Because you, you do picture things, don't you? With the word thrive, I always imagine like flowers in bloom and blossom and, and uh, deer uh, bounding through the savannah, uh, zebus, uh, crocodiles and hippos sharing the lake as the, as the, uh, uh, the naive zebra uh, comes for a drink. Um, that's what I imagine thrive, the bounty of Mother Nature and stuff like that. So what they do at Archwell, what they have done in this impact report, I don't, I'm not sure how we're measuring the impact, but anyway, this is what uplifting communities entails, I guess. We uplift communities across the globe, across the globe from Mongolia to Patagonia. They are uplifting communities across the globe, investing time and resources into people and places to foster meaningful bonds and help people thrive. They're fostering meaningful bonds, all right? How many bonds have you ever fostered, yet alone meaningful ones on a global scale? You are just, you've got no idea about the impact uh, that we're reporting on here. Whether, whether, whether it is finding solutions to address the immediate care of communities in need or the long-term well-being of a region, we remain responsive to these needs locally and globally. They're responsive, okay? The vital signs have been measured and there is a pulse. Uh, the lungs are working without the aid of machinery. Uh, they are thriving. They are meeting the short term, the long term needs to solve the mental wellness crisis uh, in Patagonia and Mongolia. Uh, they're doing that short term by giving them drugs, I guess, to make them happy. And long term by, I don't know, neutering them so that they don't reproduce. God knows what they're doing. It's all good, though. We know that much. 
This, this year, we have supported communities facing humanitarian crises, created space for refugees seeking connection, and have been inspired by women and girls forging their own pathways toward a brighter future. Uh, so, amazing uh, what they have done here. They have supported communities facing humanitarian crises. What humanitarian crises have they supported? Have they supported literally or figuratively through... Uh, thought, prayer, vibes, good energy, feng shui. How have they, how have they helped these humanitarian uh, crises? Or, or how have they supported the communities? I want to know, where's the impact report? I haven't seen the report on the impact yet, but I'm sure we're getting to the whole, the car, the cold hard data. That's coming soon, I'm guessing, right? We created spaces for refugees, so there were refugees all there, and they sort of moved all the tables and chairs out of the way for the refugees who were seeking connection. A connecting flight, I guess. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. They're seeking connection. That's what they're really... Refugees, you know, war, refugees, people escaping famine and war. What they're looking for is a bit of a bit of one-on-one -on -one time, you know, a bit of... Uh, it, it, they're just looking for a connection, okay? That's what they really want. It's not food and shelter. They want, they want some real, uh, meaningful conversation. They want to at least leave the door open to the possibility of meaningful conversation. And who knows? Maybe they could turn that meaningful conversation into, uh, into action. Right? Am I right? And not only have they done that, not only have they cleared all the, uh, un, you know, the, the old uh, furniture out of the way for the refugees who are seeking connection, they have also been inspired by women. Now, I'm not sure how that's something they have done. That's, is that the impact they've had or uh, that something that's impacted them? They've been inspired by women and girls. I mean, preaching to the choir. Look at me. I've been inspired by women and girls for fucking ages, right? Uh, who are forging their pathways towards brighter futures. Yeah, that's bloody inspiring. I understand where they're coming from. Uh, okay, so... Uh, the Welcome Project. This is the next thing they've done. Uh, I don't know what impact it's had. Let's get some cold, hard data about the Welcome Project. With a belief in the power of connection... Oh, I'll do this one with the Harry voice. With a belief in the power of connection and a goal of uplifting communities... We launched the Welcome Project in 2023. All right. What is the Welcome Project? How has it impacted the world like a tsunami of Feng Shui? The Welcome, the Welcome Project supports women-led programming for recently resettled Afghan women <laughs> uh, to help build more inclusive and connected communities. Communities. Sorry. Well, I don't know what that means exactly, but you get the idea. Afghan women looking for connections and connecting flights. And they're moving all, you know, the furniture out of the way for them. And in turn, it's a symbiotic relationship. They get inspired because they're women and men. Women, sorry. Women and girls forging their own pathways towards a brighter future. Yeah. Cur currently, there are... 11 active welcome projects across the US <laughs> uh, designed to foster the fostering again designed to foster a sense of belonging through activities including sewing, art, hiking, swimming, photography, storytelling, cooking. Well, that's all very well and good, but I mean, I get rid of the sewing and the cooking. I'd say those Afghan ladies they're probably a bit jaded from the sewing and the cooking. Art, who knows what's going to happen there. Okay. Uh, I would not want to see what they're painting. I've got to be honest. Not because it's poor quality. It just, it could be pretty uh, disturbing stuff. Um, through the Welcome Project, now we're getting to the cold, hard data. Thank Christ. 98.8%! It's a win! They got 98.8% uh, of what? 
98.8% have developed a meaningful relationship or friendship through the Welcome Project. The, uh, the Welcome Project, that's the Afghan women, right? Or just women who are inspiring everyone. 98.8% have developed a meaningful relationship in these 11 projects that have a couple of Afghan women, women or something in each of them. 1.2% um, died. <laughs> Sorry, I'm sure none of them died. Um, not officially, at least. All right, more cold, hard data. Ooh, a slight dip. 97.7%. What happened to this 97.7% and there's 2.3% who didn't make it? Have increased their sense of social connection and decreased feelings of loneliness. Cold, hard data, right? Very measurable with the loneliness meter and the uh, connector meter, the social connector meter. We measured that only 2.3% feel more isolated and uh, less connected, which is good. Another 98.8%. Wow! Feel their culture and lifestyle have been welcomed and treated with respect? 1.2% have joined a faction of... No, they haven't. Stop joking. Stop being so... Uh, silly. Uh, okay, what have we got here? Uh, we're still uplifting communities. No, we're building, building a better online world. Okay, what are they doing to build a better online world? And what percentage of it uh, is, is happening? We're putting people first and making investments in innovative upstream solutions. Okay. Ron Seal as ever. As technology continues to rapidly evolve, it's critical, it's critical that, <laughs> that equal investments are made to safeguard vulnerable populations and give a voice to families who are navigating and the digital age, as they raise the next generation, we create safe spaces where parents and young people can, <laughs> can come together and share their experiences and collaborate. Ah! Whoa, I'm getting dizzy. And collaborate to develop solutions, support one another, and advocate for change. I want some cold hard data, please. Woo! Supporting parents. Over the past year, we have built a first-of-its-kind support network for parents whose children and families have been impacted by online harm. This community is a place for parents. Oh, I remember all this. They had, they had a big speech about this the other day at the Mental World Fair, didn't they? A few months back. And Harry said, there's nothing wrong with those kids. The kids are fine. When no one was saying anything about the kids. Oh, dear. Now, this is... This is worrying. Parents in this community have reported 87%. Mm. 87% feel this network has played an important role in their healing journey. 87%. What? 13% of them are honest. What? Are you, imagine being asked by a Harry and Meghan, by Archwell Foundation. How can you keep a straight face when your kid is going through some kind of online hell. Your kid is being bullied by this strange world that you've brought them into. And uh, Archwell sit you down and say, how do you feel this network has played? What role do you think it's played in uh, your healing journey? You fucking idiots. I'm sorry, but... Um, I'm not going to condone any... Uh, the kids are innocent, right? The parents, on the other hand... For fuck's sake. Like, yeah, you're breeding jellyfish. 96% feel they experienced an increase in feelings of contact and care. The fuck? 91%, oh, there's a 9% who didn't, feel this space served as a supportive network. I like the way none of the data is in any way vague and it's all very scientific. Okay. You get the idea. I can't go on with this shit. Um, restoring trust in information. <laughs> They're restoring trust in information. Yes. Trust. Trust in me. 
just me. I'm done for today. Merry Christmas, everybody. I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.